Welcome to Hobart Middle School. We are so excited to welcome our students back into the building. I'm going to go over some of our change procedures with you coming back for the 2020-2021 school year. And obviously we did not get a chance to meet with our incoming sixth graders and their parents because we went to e-learning back in March where normally you would have come into our building with your fifth grade teachers and toured, and then you would have come back in the evening. So I apologize about that. But rest assured, we will take great care of you from the moment you are dropped off here throughout the day and as soon as you leave us. We will ensure that you are safe and welcomed and ready to learn. So behind the scenes, your administrators, guidance counselors, custodial staff, secretarial staff, support staff, we've been working tirelessly to make sure that you are ready to roll back at the middle school. Of course, special shout out to our superintendent, central office staff, and all the other people working behind the scenes to make sure that our brickies are back and ready. I'm Mrs. Neely. I'm the school principal, and many of the kids call me Mama Neely because basically I'm like the mom of the school. I take care of the kids. I make sure that you are learning. I make sure that we're safe here at school. And if there's anything that you need or anything that the staff needs, I'm here to assist. I'm the mother of the building, as you would say, or the lead teacher. And then you have Miss Craig. She's the assistant principal. She's here also for student success and to help you and the staff with anything that you may need. Meet our deans of students. Mr. Glover is the dean of students for sixth grade, part of sixth grade, and for eighth grade. Mr. Reno is our dean of students for sixth grade and seventh grade. They are here to assist you to make sure that you are successful in all that you do. Let's go over some things that have changed with our arrival procedures. Let's first talk about car riders. So students, if your parents generally bring you to school or pick you up, here are our arrival procedures. I've taken a few pictures. You can see in the one picture, there's a picture of the gymnasium doors. When your parents pull up, they will see that, the name gymnasium, they'll pull straight up right under that into by door 19. Students are dropped off by this door, door 19. So as it says, you pull in the front of the school and drop the students off at door 19. Students that need to have breakfast will go to the cafe, eat their breakfast, and stay there until dismissed to report to their homeroom. Homeroom is something new that we have this year. Students that do not need to have breakfast will report to the gym and wait there until dismissed to their homeroom. The gym has marks all through the, on the floor to ensure social distancing. Our homeroom students will happen from 7.45 to approximately 8.10. You will have the same staff member, same teacher for homeroom throughout the entire year. And that's where we'll do some of those non-negotiable morning announcements. We'll be doing the Pledge of Allegiance or any of the surveys or anything else that we need to do at the middle school. We will do it cohesively as an entire school during that time. Please know if you're brand new to our school and you're our car rider and you're being dropped off at door 19, there is staff there waiting for you to ask you, are you eating breakfast? If so, head this way to the cafeteria. You don't need to eat breakfast, head here to the gym. There are staff members throughout the building to ensure that you know exactly where you go. That's the mother in me. Okay, let's say you're a bus rider. Obviously, you must have your mask on when you're at the bus stop and when you get on the bus. But as you pull into the middle school, and if you look at the one picture on the far right where you see the poles, the posts, the buses will pull up right there. Then students will disembark, get off of the bus, and they will head up the staircase where it says auditorium in the one picture, door five. And again, students, you will have the here comes the bus app on your phone. And so you'll know when your bus is going to be there. Hold that thought because I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about Here Comes the Bus app when we get to cafeteria procedures. Okay, so students will have their masks on, like I said, waiting at the bus stop. Students will also have an assigned seat on the bus upon arriving. Students that have to have breakfast or need to have breakfast will report to the cafe, eat breakfast, and stay there until dismissed to their homeroom. Students that do not need to have breakfast will report to the auditorium and wait there until they're dismissed to the homeroom. Chairs are marked in the auditorium to ensure social distancing. And you can see in the picture of the auditorium, we have rows that are marked off so nobody can sit there. And then we have some you see with the blue X's on it. That means you can't sit there either. Any other seat is available to ensure six feet social distance. And like I said, keeping our brickies safe is our number one priority. 
So now we've gone over if you're a car rider or a bus rider, what that will look like. Also keep in mind, if you're a bus rider, there is somebody waiting at the door in the auditorium, and there's several people in the auditorium to help you, in the hallway, in the cafeteria, and so on. Okay, here's our main office, and everything is labeled throughout the building with signs that say main office, administrative hallway, and so on. The main office, that's where the principal, myself, the assistant principal, Ms. Craig, and the deans, Mr. Glover and Mr. Reno, are located. Obviously, we have our administrative assistants in here as well. You come to the main office, you have a problem to report, or if you are sent to the office by one of the teachers. Any school paperwork that needs to be turned in can be turned in here. And keep in mind, students, I know that sometimes you think, I have to go see the principal. Oh, no, we're here to serve our brickies. So please know that Mrs. Neely, Ms. Craig, Mr. Reno, and Mr. Glover were all about helping students. So it doesn't have to be a place that you dread coming to. Student services, that's right by door one as you come in, it says main office, if your parents see that as they're driving through. That's where parents drop off and pick up during the school day. Not if you're a car rider before school, but let's say that they have to drop something off during the school day or they have a meeting with one of the teachers or administrators or guidance counselors, that's where they would come in, okay? That's door one. If students need to drop off a doctor's note, they can do it here. So let's say you were out sick one day and you needed to bring in your doctor's note, you come to student services. However, we're asking that you email these at this time too, and the website is right there, jnoll at hobart.k12.in.us. She is our healthcare coordinator for the entire school city of Hobart. It would just make it a lot easier if you could email these notes instead of dropping them off. However, Student Services is our busiest office. Why? Because it's for students, and we help our students whenever needed here. Here's our guidance office, and of course, that's down the sixth grade hallway, and it's labeled. There's a sign that says guidance, and we have three guidance counselors here to assist you. Mrs. Kriko, she's the guidance coordinator. Mr. Kammer, he works with eighth grade students, and Mr. Klukin, who will be working with sixth and seventh grade students. However, you can see any of the guidance counselors if you have a question or a concern. If you have a question about your schedule, you can go to this office. If you are needing someone to talk to or having an issue at school or at home, you can visit the guidance office. Guidance counselors will be working in classrooms throughout the year. Our guidance counselors also are always in the hallway for supervision, and they work their assigned lunch hours so they can build those relationships with kids. Okay, let's talk about our virtual classroom procedures and our in-person classroom procedures. Let's start with virtual. If you are an e-learner the first semester, let's go over some things. E-learners must log in to their virtual classrooms during normal school hours. So remember, at the very beginning of this cast, I said we're having a homeroom. That homeroom will happen Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Not Wednesday, that's late start Wednesday, so we're not going to have homeroom on Wednesday. So let me say that again. Homeroom is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're an e-learner, you log in during homeroom at 745. All of you have Canvas accounts. So if you've been in the school city of Hobart in elementary school and you're new to us, sixth grade, or even if you're a returning seventh grader or eighth grader, you know how to get to your Canvas account. New students, we will help you navigate that if needed. Also, you, need to require, you are required to follow your class schedule and the bell schedule throughout the day. Respect to bell schedule means, okay, so I have homeroom from 745 until 810. What does that mean? That means you're required to log in to see what the announcements are, see what the non-negotiables are for, to start the day before you go to your first hour. Attendance is taken during that time. And then you'll start your first hour, which is around 815, I believe, and you'll be in that class. Now, if you're a virtual learner, your teacher will start the lesson, take attendance. They may say, okay, everybody, I'm going to go over the lesson. I'm going to do the I do. Then we're going to do the we do where we practice together. And then you're going to do the you do. You do some practice on your own. At that time, they may say to you, go ahead and practice and you can get off of the computer and ask questions if you need to through Canvas. But you are required to be in class when you're a virtual learner during the school day, just like you were here. You also must abide by all virtual classroom etiquette and school rules apply. 
classroom procedures. These are in-person students. Students will carry their backpacks to class with them. Now, if you know Mama Neely, we always kept our backpacks in our locker. No purses, no fanny packs, none of that. But because we're trying to social distance, keep everybody safe, backpacks will go into the classroom. I'm actually sitting in a classroom right now as I'm taping this, and the desks are six feet apart. There is plenty of room for you to put your backpack on the floor in front of you or on the side of you, and you will have your supplies needed. Okay? To start the year, please do not send all your supplies. So parents don't send in all their supplies. Students should have their Chromebook, paper, a folder, their textbooks or workbooks, and planners. Teachers will give more information as to what they need during the first week. We've already had a few parents call and say, oh my goodness, that backpack is so heavy. We are tech, we are one-to-one. -one, so many of the things will be, you know, digital online. So you won't have to worry about that. So the first week of school, the teachers will let you know exactly what is needed. Students will also wipe down their desks and chair at the end of every class. So let's say the class gets over at 8.50. Maybe at 8.45, the teachers will have the kids wipe down the desks, they'll throw it into the garbage, they'll sanitize, the bell rings, they'll leave, and they will leave out of their classroom with their backpacks and go straight to their next classroom. And again, all of these procedures, virtual and in person, will be revisited during homeroom. Backpacks and water bottles. Backpacks, well, I already mentioned that. No lockers will be used at this time. Eventually, we will get back to using your lockers. And of course, sixth graders or new students, we will practice, 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 and you'll be old pros before you know it. But right now, your backpacks are going to go with you to your classes and to lunch. During class, like I mentioned, leave it on the floor next to your desk. Water bottles are allowed in the classroom, but we don't have any water fountains that are working. And if you could see in the one picture, there's like blue tape by the water fountain, that's because we don't want to share germs that way. But if you look back, there's like a picture of a water bottle. You can put your actual bottle that you've brought from home and refill it at our refilling stations. We have two refilling stations. We have one in our auditorium lobby and we have one in the upper cafe. Okay, hallway procedures. This is something that I implemented, I think this is my sixth year at Hobart Middle School as the principal. So my first year we did something called tight to the right. You can see the line going down the hallway. This is actually a picture of the sixth grade hallway. And you can see the door, the brown door ahead. That's actually the nurse's station. Anyway, in the sixth grade hallway and seventh and eighth grade, and even in our related arts hallways, we have tape on the floor. That means tight to the right. This is a especially important that during this time, you stay on the right-hand side of the hallway as you are going from one class to the next. We should stay a single file line as possible against the lockers and we do not lollygag. We're not messing around. We go from one class to the next, no locker use. And please report to your next class as soon as you leave your first one. Okay, let's talk about lunch. Now, these pictures look a little bit different. Prior to our pandemic, we had tables in our cafeterias. And now to ensure six feet social distancing, we have desks. But just relax, students. We are going to allow you to sit next to your friends. So you'll be coming down to lunch, you know, from class. You will be able to sit with your friends. But once you sit down and you've said, okay, I'm going to sit next to my friend Sally. Once you sit down next to them, that will be your assigned seat. We have to do that to ensure safety. Students will be assigned to a lunch area based upon their classroom teacher they have prior to lunch. So let's say I have, I'm seventh grade and I have Miss Ansack for English. Okay, Miss Ansack's class may be told, you are going to report to the new cafe. And maybe Mr. Davis's class is told, you're going to re be reporting to the old cafe. Your teachers will let you know, but you rest assured you will have friends in either part of the cafe. Okay, I'm gonna go back over this. Students will be allowed to select a seat the first day, but then they will be in that seat assigned to them moving forward. All right, remember I told you I was gonna come back to Here Comes the Bus app? And I am in no cell phone policy school. Cell phones should be out of sight. They'll be in your backpack or on your purse and we can't see them. However, during lunch, if you have a cell phone, you can download Here Comes the Bus app on your phone to pay for your meal. So when students go in socially distanced into the cafe to get their prepackaged lunch, and we have a hot option and we will have a wrap, I believe, you can always bring your lunch too, they'll go have a seat 
and the cafeteria staff will come to you. They have a mobile device, I believe. And if you have your phone with, here comes the app. We'll show you how to download all of that. They will be able to run your cafeteria account through that. We will help you, okay? That is something we can discuss in homeroom. That's why it's so important to have a homeroom to go over all of those procedures. And I know some of you are like, oh my goodness, I'm so overwhelmed about, what about this? What about that? Please rest assured, we have staff everywhere all the time as the mother of the building, safety, safety, safety. Of course, that's our district initiative. I want you to learn as much as you can here and feel safe in the process. So there may seem like a lot of rules, but I promise you, you will be guided through all of those. Okay, one last thing on this slide. Students will need to bring all of their materials with them to the lunchroom. There will be room for them to place these items on the floor by their desks. So that way, if you have a cell phone, you have the Here Comes the app. And let's say you got a hot lunch. Let's say we're having pizza that day. You're eating your pizza. And all of a sudden, the cafeteria cashier comes over and says, hi there. And you pull out your phone and she'll beep your app so that you could pay for your lunch. And again, we'll go over those procedures. You could hear the bell ringing in the background. I'm in a classroom actually doing this. Okay, let's go over end of the day dismissal. Let's talk about car riders and walkers. Car riders will exit the building through door 19, the gym lobby, the same door you were dropped off at in the morning. And you will stand on one of the orange lines to maintain social distancing. Actually, Miss Craig and I were out there and we did the chalk paint just to social distance six feet. You'll see that. So it's the same door you came in if you were dropped off as a car rider. You will be exiting that. And I promise you, lots of adults will be there to help you. Parents will pull in front of the school and wait for their student to load their vehicle. Students cannot walk around to the side of the building to get into a car. All car riders must be picked up in the front of the school. Walkers will exit door five after the buses have pulled out or door 19 at the end of the school day. This is actually not new. This is what we did last year. Now we did have several parents and I get it. My kids are raised, but I, you know, when I had kids in school and I needed to go pick them up, it was very busy at the end of the day for car riders. But I need you to adhere to these expectations and these rules because we want to ensure safety all the time. Okay, so that's car riders. Let's shift over to the other side, bus riders. Bus riders will be dismissed from class at 2.32, a little bit early. This will ensure them time to get to the bus quickly and prevent students congregating in the hallways at the end of the day. Bus riders leave out the auditorium lobby, and there was a picture of the auditorium lobby when you entered the building from the bus, and students cannot ride home with other students on a different bus. Keep in mind, we have assigned seats on our bus, so we want to make sure that you're getting on the bus that was assigned to you, and masks must be worn on the bus. Okay, I know this is pretty long, and you're like, well, what about this class, and what about that? I promise all of that will come the very first day. Please rest assured, and I know you're nervous and you're like, I don't know where to go. I don't know if I'll have any of my friends in my classroom. I was a middle school kid. It was called junior high back then, a very long time ago. And I had the same worries myself. But once you get through probably just even the first hour of the school day, you'll be like, hmm, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. I thought the school was going to be so huge and I wouldn't find my way around it. But it's not too bad after all. It's absolutely not. I promise you, we will make a seamless transition back to our building. We are here to help you every step of the way. I promise you that the School City of Hobart, Hobart Middle School, and all the staff are here to protect our brickies. And we need you to do your part. You wear your mask to protect me. I wear my mask to protect you. Okay? We are protecting our community. And guess what, brickies? We got this. Cannot wait to see you all on Monday, August 24th, either virtually or in person. Have a great day.